Hey, thanks for watching. I had been promising my kids that I would build a treehouse for about a year. Last August in 2019, I finally got my act together. I made a plan and ordered some timber and set about building. The first step was to pour some concrete feet to set the legs on. The ground in my garden is fairly compact, so I dug down about four inches and set the forms in the ground. I used a simple square shaped frame to mark out where I had to dig, and then when the forms were in, I used it to level them to each other. Using pre-mixed bags of sand and cement, I set about mixing and filling the forms. I completely underestimated the amount of concrete I would need, so I had to grab some random leftover sand and cement to finish the job. It was getting dark quickly and I needed to have these filled. Technically, it's not really a treehouse. It's a structure sitting on five legs strapped to a couple of trees. I was originally going to get 6x6 six treated posts and mortise and tenon to cross pieces, but instead I bought some treated 2x6s and set about making the legs out of three pieces laminated together. This saved a lot of time and money, I got the idea from watching Kyle from the RR Buildings channel. They use laminated posts for their pole barns, and those structures are huge and carry massive weight. I cut all the leg pieces to the sizes on my cut list and I found using a cordless circular saw was easier than a chop saw. The circular saw was plenty accurate for what I needed. It wasn't my favourite part of the project as it was fairly tedious. Cutting and then drilling and then countersinking for screws. And having to do it four times. A few moments later. <laughs> for extra strength I used a waterproof outdoor construction adhesive before screwing the legs together with my very noisy impact driver. It's going to be noisy now, okay? Working on the ground does make the job a little more difficult and uncomfortable. I should have made a temporary work table, but I had limited time to get this done. I lifted the legs over to the concrete feet. Once legs were in position, I could put the first set of cross pieces in place. These were going to be carriage bolted together, but I initially screwed them to keep them from moving. I made a drill guide as I didn't have a drill bit long enough to go through the three pieces of timber. I used a common edge on both sides and I marked inside and outside. I managed to drill through perfectly in all 12 holes using this very basic method. Once the two sets of legs were bolted together, I was able to lift them up and because of their large footprint, they stood freely. I screwed a couple of supports between the two sets and I had a basic freestanding structure. As I spent a bit of time making sure the concrete forms were level to each other, when I had this basic structure up, it was miraculously level and plumb. One thing I forgot to do was glue some damp proofing to the bottom of the legs. I have this 3mm PVC foam board for my work. 
It's used for signage and I had some scraps which I cut to the size of the footprint of the legs. As the structure was standing I just hoisted it up with a piece of timber and shoved a gluey mess underneath. I'm not sure how effective it will be but I think it was worth doing to keep the end grain of the legs away from the concrete. I had started to attach lengths of timber around the bottom of the legs to stop them from splaying out while building. I'll eventually secure the legs to the concrete with steel straps just for additional support. I continued putting the subfloor structure in place and the more I added to it, the more rigid the whole structure got. It remained nice and level which was very satisfying, especially as I was concerned that my concrete feet might sink under the weight and this still happened four months later. I had to change my plan to accommodate a little walkway to where the stairs will be as there wouldn't have been enough room around the house to have a place where the stairs comes up to meet it. This also allowed me to anchor it to a second tree which also helped strengthen the structure. I will admit that as I was making these changes it started to feel like the treehouse was becoming bulkier with the additional supports and timber added to it. It wasn't as streamlined as I would like it to be. I think a good design is something that uses everything it needs, but not one thing more. In this case, it was only when I had something in place that I understand how it behaved in real life, such as something you think would be more rigid, definitely needing additional bracing to stop the part from flexing and moving. I felt I needed to add a fifth leg to support the platform where the stairs would attach to. I didn't have any more sand and cement or time to mix and pour it, so I used a little block of concrete that I had lying around and set it in the ground. As I said before, the ground is fairly hard and compact, so I sat it in. I'll be pouring concrete around this later on. To finish off this first part of the project, I started building a mini platform to split the stairs into two, a stairs landing of sorts. This is so that there isn't a straight run down from the top when one of my kids inevitably falls down the stairs. Even though there was no floor timbers on the treehouse, I needed this platform in place so I could make the stairs. I wanted to floor the main platform out with the stairs in place so I could keep it nice and level with the top step of the stairs. This structure was about 2 feet by 2 feet and the platform was about 2.5 feet up, so it was not sturdy and wobbled a lot when freestanding. My thinking was that when the two sets of stairs are bolted to it, and it bolted to the treehouse, that then it would become rigid. As soon as the second part is done, I'll link to it at the end of this video. But in the meantime, check out some of my other videos, like this video, and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.